But so I was going to tell you about this is my dad, by the way. He's you know very very important person to me. <laughs> uh, but um, wouldn't be here without me. Wouldn't be here without you. But uh, yeah, I was going to tell you, and this came up. This is why we talked about this. The the least accurate prediction in physics ever. Right uh -huh. now, you've heard about how you know various parts of physics where Einstein predicted the you know the change in position of stars caused by caused by the sun and they measured it during a solar eclipse yes, so yes, yes, some yes. only matter it was a very very small amount right something trivial for us students to figure out these days but back then it was you know quite a, quite uh, a revelation but physics isn't always super accurate and there's a great example of what i like to call the least accurate prediction in physics ever and it really illustrates how uh -huh. Quantum mechanics and general relativity are just two completely different sections, right? Okay, yeah. So have you heard of something called zero-point energy? Yes, I have. What's zero-point energy? It's basically uh, energy which, which permeates the whole of space-time. Yeah, and it's responsible oh. for things... Well. Okay, in theory, it could be responsible for things like dark energy, or could be at least related. Uh, uh -huh. There's a, The thing about zero-point energy is it arises from something called quantum field theory. Now, right? Why are people doing full-time study now? Yeah. Quantum field theory is the most successful model of particle physics, right? Uh -huh. Everything, it essentially takes the universe, and you, you understand the electromagnetic waves, right? Okay. So you have the electromagnetic it's a field and you can cause waves on it and those uh -huh. waves can be photons, mm -hmm. right? Well, it turns out, you know, quantum field theory allows you to do this for other things such as the colour field, which is used to model quarks, right? Oh, and, quarks. Right. So these fields can be set up in various ways and they can model particle physics. And it's great. It's amazingly successful. It works all the time. Now, because quantum field theory follows quantum mechanics, they also are susceptible or they're also subject to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. I mean, do you know what the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is? Well, I've heard of it. Okay, so Heisenberg uncertainty principle basically says that uh, you can't exactly know a particle's position so and means... momentum simultaneously. Right, There's, a, you can get close to it, but there's a fundamental lower limit uh -huh. of how accurately you can know both of these things together, right? Okay. So, and, and a great an analogue is that if you've got an atom and you want to figure out where it is, how do you figure out where an atom is? Well, you, sh you look at it, right? How mm -hmm. do you look at it? You look at it with light. Yeah. And if you look at it, with, say, with a radio wave, then uh, you'll know where it is to the position of the wavelength of the radio wave, right? Right. But the radio wave will bump off it and knock it around. Mm -hmm. Now, if you then, say, use an optical photon, an optical photon has much shorter wavelengths, so you get much better positional accuracy. Right, okay. But that thing will bump it and knock it off even more. Right. So by observing the system, you're chase it, changing it. And that's kind of an analog. It's not strictly correct. Yeah, yeah, right? Uh -huh. Anyway, because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, it turns out that if you have a physical system with certain levels of energy, there's a there's an absolute lower limit of energy you can have in a system, right? right? You can never remove this energy from the system. Right. So what happens is quantum field theory predicts that for every mode of energy in the universe, there is a absolute lower lower limit. Uh -huh. that exists that you cannot get rid of and therefore there's an energy always there right okay and you can actually calculate this and moreover you can measure this using an experiment uh, do you know what the casimir effect is I keep... no, no, I that. oh the casimir mean. effect is awesome what happens is if you take two metal plates in a vacuum and you put them very close together uh -huh. so, you know tiny distance apart what happens is they start to experience a force pulling them to get together. Right, like gravitational effects. Right, but well, the explanation for this is that when you take two plates and you move them very close together, well, suddenly you can't fit long wavelength photons in there, can you? 
right? You can't fit radio waves or you can't fit okay. infrared. Right. But you might be able to fit optical photons. Well, the the explanation is, or the explanation of this force is, that since inside you can't have these low, long wavelength frequencies, mm -hmm. there's less energy in the middle between these plates than there is on the outside. And so the pressure of this energy outside is pu what's pushing the plates together. So quantum field theory works incredibly well for particle physics. Mm -hmm. And there's even a physical, a physical experiment which shows that zero point energy, according to quantum field theory, should actually exist and is measurable. Now, let's take this and we expand it out, not a couple of plates. Let's take a look out at space probes like Voyager and Pioneer. Okay. Now, they're a long way out mm -hmm. and they are experiencing a force of gravity due to the sun and the planets and everything else. So we can apply this theory to measure the density of energy that must be in the solar system that's adjusting them, right? Okay. You, you imagine that <coughs> the sun is, you, know, you imagine uh -huh. the energy is everywhere. And it turns out that the measurement of the change in their velocity due to zero point energy uh -huh. is essentially not there, right? <laughs> it's, we get this to an energy, there's a lower limit you can specify on it. And I believe that when you take the level, the, the energy prediction that comes from space probes, and you compare it against the prediction due to quantum field theory, mm -hmm. they are different by a factor of 10 to about 120, I think. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's like a trillion, 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 trillion times <laughs> wrong. So <laughs> now these numbers are all kind of vague, mm -hmm. and the exact, you know, exact numbers are hard to come by, but mm -hmm. this... Fundamentally, you know, one thing, one branch, one very well understood branch of physics mm -hmm. predicts this value. One other very well branch of physics predicts another thing. And they're wrong by a number that is unimaginable, right? It's it's like it's like saying, how, how many atoms do you think there are in the universe? Mm -hmm. How many do you think are in the universe? Oh, you can't tell. Right, okay. But say I said there was one you atom in the universe, it. right? We can't imagine. No, but say I said one atom in the universe, mm -hmm. right? That would still be a more accurate estimate than <laughs> this particular comparison. Because there's certainly no more than 10 to the 100 uh, atoms or particles in the universe. It's, like, ridiculous. Oh, if you, yeah, there's another fun one. Uh, yeah, the, you ever heard about the one electron theory? There's... Um, yeah, it was actually really early on, somebody came up with the idea that there was only one electron uh -huh. in the universe. Right. And that what happened was the universe, the electron would travel forwards in time along one path, and then it would reach the end of the universe and then travel backwards as a positron, uh -huh. and then it would travel forwards. And I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, as, as ridiculous as this sounds, it was actually taken seriously by Feynman, I think, and it, it ultimately was cited or he mentioned it when he uh, accepted his nobel prize even although it turned out there was many reasons why this couldn't actually work <laughs> the the one electron i think it was a, a guy called wheeler worth reading about it anyway anyway mm -hmm. that's that's my story of the least accurate you know prediction in physics